Welcome back. For this video, I am going to profile the 10 Santa Maria Novella fragrances in my collection. That's right, 10. Just so happens to be 10, how convenient. This uh, house, Santa Maria Novella, based in Florence, has a history spanning back to the uh, 13th century. Um, it was founded um, as a Dominican Friars Conventum and is regarded as the oldest pharmacy in the world and uh, carries its activities in all the same places where it had began so many centuries ago. And um, it is famous not only for its perfumes, but also candles and traditional preparations, many of which have... Um, formulas that go back um, as far as the existence of Santa Maria Novella. So it all began 800 years ago when these Dominican friars uh, were granted the use of uh, the Santa Maria Intervenus uh, Venius, uh, the Holy Ma uh, Mary among the vines. And it's a small church just outside of the city walls um, or they had this garden that they grew herbs and plants to craft these uh, elixirs, ointments, um, tinctures, unctuants, uh, unguents. Uh, and in the early 14th century, these friars of the Ta Santa Maria Novella uh, had rose to greatness for healing the rich merchant uh, Dardano Accioli, Accioli, uh, coming from one of the most powerful families of France as a sign of gratitude. So many of the fragrances that I'm going to be discussing were actually formulated, I think, as early as the 19th century. But um, some of the eau de colognes are rumored to have had their beginnings many centuries prior to. So we'll get started here, um, as there are many different uh, excellent videos already on YouTube that cover the history and give you a tour of the actual uh, location of Santa Maria Novella. Um, and I could not do uh, justice what they've already done by visiting it. And I only hope to visit Florence in, uh, someday in the future. So we'll get started uh, with uh, Po de Spagna from uh, allegedly 1901. Uh, this is a saddle -re letter, leather, <laughs> unlike any other. Um, it's this remarkable old world concoction that presents itself boldly and unapologetically. Uh, this is my own personal reference leather. Uh, we don't have the suede or all, the modern leather uh, materials, no saffrolene packed modern interpretation. This is the OG leather, as it were. This is leather as it was composed during the earliest leathers. Um, think about uh, Spanish leathers and then Russian leathers, uh, where you have a significant amount of birch tar, maybe cade, castorium. So this opens with what I consider a sensory thrill ride. It evokes Santa Maria Novella's apothecary origins. It's fiercely phenolic. And if, for those who are not aware of phenolic, phenolic is something that smells a uh, very uh, smoky and intensely medicinal. There's even something somewhat iodine-like and encapsulated in this powdery, spicy hawthorn and carnation. And that amplifies into the heart. I almost imagine that it's the aroma of um, a cobbler shop in the 19th century, complete with these wafts from the polish, bitter, aromatic, herbal, elements shape this sensation. And as we enter further into the heart of Podespania, we get more of a classic saddle soap accord, which is accompanied by what really seems to be a genuine civet note uh, that animates the stage in the development. Uh, the base is the most beautiful, dry, dusty, dark cedar imbued with birch tar smoke. I am in love with this dark masterpiece. This is a recent bottle. People may say that you have to get an older bottle, but not to fear. These recent bottles are just orgasmic. They're just amazing stuff. So that's Po de Spagna from Santa Maria Novella. 
And the next one that we have here is patchouli. And um, there are a few patchouli fragrances um, that are as true as that of this old world juggernaut. And it's one that breathes with radiance of the dampest, earthiest, and um, most peaty qualities of patchouli. It's bitter, it's savory. This is one that rides rough, and boy, it is worth the ride. We encounter nary a murmur of cacao nor a whisper of vanilla. However, I'm immediately reminded of humus. So humus is that decomposition of leaves and other plant material by the microorganism, microorganisms within the soil. Um, hovering above is a mentholic, camphoraceous quality, like fog above the forest floor, brooding and mysterious. This is real, it's raw, it's unrelenting. This is the paragon of patchoulis, as far as I'm concerned in my humble opinion. Next in line is Maresiala. And I recently featured Maresiala in um, a video on wonderfully dated fragrances um, that you should check out if you haven't already. Uh, this dates from uh, allegedly 1828. And to me, this is the memories of a spooky cellar of my youth shadows of the unknown stored behind old pewter plates and pots besides mason jars filled with preserves and bulk spices of nutmeg and clove the must and dank bridges with a bulkhead so think about it we're in a cellar so there's this bulkhead that lets in the air of a medicinal herb garden that's just gone wild. And there are these ancient mythic herbs that were used to cure, cure ailments. It starts really camphoraceous. It's astringent, turpentine-like, which can be alarming enough so that some might actually recoil. But on the contrary for me, I am one uh, ever since I was a kid, I was never one to heave or reject anything that was sore, of that sort, and I, I feel enraptured with such aromas. I don't know. Maybe this is from a past life. It is just so far removed from traditional notions of what a perfume should smell. It just feels so visceral, so esoteric to the modern nose. The hardest pressed rose in this old, slightly damp book on the verge of disrepair. These wooden beams and boards, cubby holes with old magazines and keepsakes and abandoned spaces full of stories long dormant. The nutmeg soon is isolated from that camphor and left bare with the wood and the paper. I smell memories that keep piling up, not sure if they are even my own memories or those of long departed spirits. The smell of a distant marsh pregnant with vegetation at various stages of growth and decay, courtesy of a stark patchouli in the base. It's reminiscent of spikenard oil. If you haven't smelled it, you should smell spikenard. Um, it closes out Maresiella as it descends and then eventually fades on the skin. This is a bewitching concoction that is ripe for re for discovery by some adventurous noses out there who want something else for an experience in, in scent. It's just really out there. It's actually quite wearable though. I, I wear this in public and it, it dries down quite accessibly, I think, within my space, and, but it will smell unlike anything else anyone else around you has ever worn. Next in line is Potpourri. All right, the name. <laughs> so, so this was from 1828, um, according to the website. Um, to be clear, do not be thrown off by its name. 
Potpourri is not your grandma's or your auntie's bowl of potpourri. It is not powdery, sweet, not really floral, save for the carnation that's here. This is an old world 19th century creation. It's more a potion that clears the senses and heals the soul, predating familiar classic approaches to perfumery. It is unapologetically camphoraceous, much like Maresiala, phenolic, medicinal, and I love every second of that. Here, there's more of a blast of bay leaves, rosemary, and thyme, uh, which braces you from the start. It's so warm and savory, almost reminding me of a more perfumed bell seasoning, if you're familiar with using that around the holidays, around Thanksgiving. However, as we reach the heart of this fragrance, we realize this is all buffered by a softer, more resinous undercurrent. Uh, this junction is the most sensuous and captivating stage in development, as we have this duality that imparts a musky, ever so slightly perspiring sensation. And I detect the Peru balsam with its more vanillic, cinnamic qualities as it slowly enters the picture here. So this Peru balsam, it's obtained by removing the bark of the Meroxylin balsamum tree. And scorching the exposed wood, the Peru balsam not only has its history and flavor um, and perfume, but also medicine. So naturally it would be present in this concoction. We're talking about Santa Maria Novella. Uh, the dry down to the base is ever more smoky, elusive, and musky, perhaps due to this really stoic patchouli fixing it all together. No chocolate, no cacao, no cake, all dirt, must sweat, and candor, wrapped in a balsamic sweetness. Now you may ask, why wear something that smells somewhat medicinal? Trust me when I say that potpourri is not of the time or world for that wet matter. It's not of this world. Uh, that it somehow works. It, it is the dichotomy of the antiseptic with the dirty, the erogenous. All of this really speaks to the adventure in perfume. The depth and dimension and fragrance. Not to mention the scope of history. One has, who for, for somebody who's grown tired of the same hackneyed sweet amber bases and safe, yawn-inducing, accessible niche, quote-unquote, the ennui of today, uh, they could stand to reach for potpourri, amongst others in the Santa Maria Novella line. There are many others that take you in a very different direction. Including the next one, which is Aqua de Cuba from 1998. Glory be. Aqua de Cuba is larger than life. From its pithy, golden-hued citrus fanfare to its tobacco-infused honey and clary sage absolute heart. So when I say absolute, the solvent extracted absolute of the plant material versus the essential oil. It's a slightly different fragrance profile. Um, this is bright yet sensuous, utterly intoxicating, and a powerhouse for the books. A saturated fullness envelops the wearer, but never is so heavy as to suffocate. Aqua de Cuba is more a seduction. Come here, lover boy. Hey, lover boy. <laughs> well, it is a more recent release from the old world wonderland that is Santa Maria Novella. There is still that signature classicism that enchants me. I almost feel motivated to take it to the next level and reach for some mustache wax, carry a pocket watch, and don a tweed suit with riding boots. That would be something as I stare at my, <laughs> my very cozy sweater hair and my lived-in jeans. Uh, I think my fragrances will eventually transform me into a dandy one day. Anyhow, Aqua de Cuba, Cuba, <laughs> Aqua de Cuba is dandy. <laughs> it's beguiling, even. Uh, the dry down has this cinnamon quality, 
replacing the quenched qualities earlier in the development with these facets of aged oxidized tobacco leaves and all their rawness fading into the scene it's distant and wistful like a faded memory you cling on to with all your heart as you and perhaps your lover nuzzle into your skin this people is what we really call a stunner aqua de cuba And they just keep coming because I think this one is a stunner too. Melagrano, Melagrano from 1965. My first encounter with Santa Maria Novella Melagrano was through a visit to Pickwick's Mercantile in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, where a sales associated associate suggested I smell a finely milled soap bar. I was immediately enamored and bought it on the spot. Uh, radiantly aldehydic and mossy, evoking only the tartness of pomegranate arrows and no sweetness. I relished that bar of soap and just knew I had to have the cologne itself one day. And that was actually my very first Santa Maria Novella purchase. Now, with it in my possession, I am just a smitten. Uh, the heart of the scent is hawthorn blossoms dusted with orris powder. Milligrano's moss note is testament to the fact that the oak moss, just as sandalwood and civet, continue to live on in perfumery through exceptional reconstructions. And this bottle, it, it certainly was produced after heavy restrictions were put into place. I imagine vetiver and patchouli in the base certainly helps that, uh, but it's just ravishing. Likewise, a poppinax, also recently restricted, is really apparent to my nose through its dry down. It's bittersweet, dry, almost toffee-like, and it's soapy, sure, yet transcending the soap as a full-bodied, glorious Shebra. Mm, another work of art. Here I have Fieno. Fieno in Italian is hay. This is rumored to be from 19, 1886, and this brings to that category of fragrances for which provide not just merely sensory pleasure, but a source of comfort and repose. Faced with the anxiety of having to face some important decisions uh, at a certain point in my life, I recall, I, wearing this felt like I was swaddled in a reassuring blanket uh, that is neither too warm or too sheer. It's an aromatic embrace of tender sweetness that doesn't stifle or overwhelm. Once again, Hawthorne Blossom appears, and this is anisaldehyde in its main, is the main component of Hawthorne Blossom is this anisaldehyde, which is anisic, but not anise. Um, I'm actually going to be doing a, um, a whole series of... Um, reviews on fragrances that feature in prominence Hawthorne um, the week of, so we're talking today as of this video is being made March 3rd, so uh, the week of March 6th, 6th <laughs> through the 9th. Um, so check that out on Instagram, JJ Coldhorn and Instagram. Um, and I will actually be featuring this as one of them. Um, this really stands out here for me shortly after this pastel citrus of the opening, it, it, it just has this green herbal aromatic quality, but also powdery and somewhat ethereal. And this is accompanied by uh, a myrtle. Yes, myrtle. And I wish that note appeared more in fragrance. Um, it's, it's a little medicinal, little camphorous, but also floral. And it counters this ever so subtly with, uh, with those um, softer pastel characteristics. The fresh mown hay note is the centerpiece. And I detect a dose of true hay absolute. And the only other fragrances where I've detected it are um, Serge Luton's Chagui and Lorenzo Villaresi Yerba Mate. It is in no way evocative of barnyards or horsiness, though. This is more of the hay itself in bales under the sun, evocative almost of sweet grass or sweet woodruff. Um, it is a grestic, a crossroads between the cheerful 
in the melancholic. It reminds me of uh, autumn drives through the Vermont uh, countryside, uh, listening to bread on the radio. I don't know why, but bread comes to mind. If a picture paints a thousand words, then why can't I paint you? The words will never show the you I've come to know. <laughs> you know, is anchored by more substantive notes that carry on the sensation. An amalgam of benzoin, vanilla, and vetiver. It is a hearth of coziness, a true beauty and another spectacular one from my beloved house of Santa Maria Novella. And we're at the eighth one. Genestra. Genestra was released in 2001. So I've been known to wear the, the, uh, this one on um, hot, blazing days. And uh, th there's this cooling sob of crisp, cool salty air, these peppery herbs by the ocean, and, and, and a refreshing iced tea. That's Those are all the things I feel with Genestra. It is a breeze that is needed, a sort of fragrant repose, a way to temper all the delirious haziness. So it opens with a certain vegetal summer foliage quality that is quintessentially Santa Maria Novella. Uh, this soon reveals a more uh, floral element, the scent of sun-drenched Spanish broom. Um, Genestra is gene or broom in Italian. Uh, Spanish broom has these supple yellow florals, uh, flowers rather, um, and there's a certain wildflower quality to their scent. You know what this sort of reminds me of is the wandering uh, the sand dunes of Cape Cod National Seashore and Provincetown. Um, the dry down is like walking through these shadier woods uh, adjacent to those dunes. Uh, the aroma is warmed up mosses and ferns. The languorous release of resins and sap as evening approaches but you make sure to take cover before the dare flies attempt to ravage you. What's left are traces of the day, a sleepy head, and hopefully some decent air conditioning. So, one great one from summer wear is the beautiful Genestra. And then the sadly discontinued Garofano from 1828. Garofano is carnation uh, in Italian. And I believe this may have been discontinued because of the, the, the serious challenge of putting together a Carnation Accord today with heavy restrictions on eugenol and eugenol derivatives. Um, and also maybe a Carnation Soliflor is a hard sell, which would be heartbreaking to me because I love Carnation and fragrance. And this is no exception. This is Technicolor Carnations. And they greet me from the very beginning with a citrus lift imparting almost this fresh, cool, floral shop quality. It doesn't get any more real than that. I, I literally feel like I'm putting my nose up to a bouquet of carnations a few minutes after application. It's, it's perfection. And the heart reveals its herbal tones which is that hallmark as we have figured out with santa maria novella these sprigs of rosemary and lavender supporting the spicy clovey carnation as these fulsome fragrant foliage is just cradling the senses here i also experience an effervescent vivacity the promise of springtime sunshine better days better ways a serotonin booster as it were there is nothing heavy or plodding about this uh, the tonality is pristine and the sweetness is moderate thanks to some benzoin and its leathery vanillic warmth mm. gentlemen would certainly delight in this marvelous carnation accord 
Um, as if we isolated that carnation in, you know, Hermès's um, equipage or Le Troisième Homme de Caron, um, and made that carnation the star, lionized and absolutely ravishing. Oh, Garofano, you dreamboat, how I love you. Mwah. I'll savor that one. And last but not least is Nostalgia. Nostalgia was released in 2001. And if someone asks why I turn to the experience of scent, one of the main reasons is Nostalgia. Where does it take me in my path? Is faded youth once more illuminated? What memories are conjured up in the ether? could very well explain my penchant for the classics in the sense that a normie who I think is dated or hasn't aged well in Santa Maria Novella's Nostalgia, although it was released in 2000, I think it might actually be 2002, it, it, it does hit all of those buttons and in a startling manner. And oh boy. Yes, that opening is the most shocking gasoline petrol note I have ever experienced in a fragrance. And that includes Fahrenheit. And one might think it shouldn't even be inhaled. It's just that convincing. It is that realistic. It's fascinating. The blast is brief, much like the flashpoint of gasoline and would otherwise be overwhelming if it persisted. But I love that it exists in this composition as it serves as a perfect introduction to the fragrance as it warms into this leather, this sort of rubber, hot asphalt under the scorching sun. There's a Styrax and birch tar, along with what seems to be uh, fractionations of pedigrain that serve to create that effect. Uh, it dries down musky and vanillic with an echo of the car grease, an oiliness perhaps contributed by ambrette seed. Uh, I see checkered flags as I daydream. If those who were supremely disappointed with Penhaligon's sports car club, like I was, they might find the experience they need with nostalgia. For me, it, it takes me back to visits with my dad at ADAP, which was uh, an auto parts store, or he'd go to another one called Napa, and uh, I would accompany him. And uh, just as a kid, I just loved exploring the store while he was getting whatever he needed. Um, and this just has the overall feel of vehicles from that time when there was more leather, rubber, and metal uh, than the plastic of today. The wafts of exhaust and fumes, while thankfully a thing of the past due to reduced emissions, still carry with it something somehow wistful to me as well. So as not to put too fine a point on it, nostalgia is worth the experience if any of the above appeals to you. Oh man, some neat stuff. So those are my 10 Santa Maria novella. And that was courtesy, uh, the idea was a courtesy of uh, one of my regular viewers. And I appreciate you for that. I appreciate all of you. And for those of you who have just discovered my channel, please don't hesitate to subscribe and like this video and click on the bell button to receive future notifications of other videos and also my weekly live streams uh, named, curiously, Effluvium, uh, which I have every week uh, with guest panelists and lots of great discussion on fragrance. So thank you so much for joining me again, and until next time, be well. <laughs>